On today's retro spot, I've actually had to move the camera a little further back just to get this. Um, today's retro spot, we're having a look at Visionaries Knights of the Magical Light. We're looking at the Spectral Knights Capture Chariot. Definitely one of my favorite toys from the 80s. You probably have already seen my review of the Sky Claw and thought to yourself, Spot, I'm more interested than ever before for the Visionary Toys. Show us more. Uh, well, now I'm having a look at the Capture Chariot. Um, it's, a, it's a very large box. Again, I'm further back than what I normally would be. And uh, hopefully I can show everything that's in this package. Uh, on the front, we have this beautiful artwork, hand-drawn beautiful artwork of the, of the, uh, the Capture Chariot. And one of the effects used very frequently in the cartoon, uh, the back holographic points of the, um, the actual uh, pods, uh, actually was a hologram of a hand throwing a fireball. And, and that was used frequently in the cartoon. Um, in fact, I think even one, in one moment, uh, the, the hand throwing the fireball actually defeated uh, the summons of destruction. It, des it destroyed the, the beast of destruction. Uh, there is some assembly required. Now this box, unlike the Sky Claw, uh, inside this box actually is the, is the Capture Chariot fully built. Uh, luckily it fits in this box, uh, still built. You don't have to take anything apart except for really taking the pods off. Uh, but the uh, Spectral Link uh, driver that comes with this vehicle is Feral. He's in there as well, don't worry, we'll get to that. Um, down below you can see a, the holographic image of the hand throwing the fireball. As present with all the carded figures as well as the vehicles, we've got the picture of, uh, well, the, the hologram of Merkel in there. Uh, on the side of the box, it's pretty much, you, the light's going to still get it, the side of the box is pretty much the same as the front. 80s toys were really bad for this, if anything. Really good artwork on the front, but then they basically reuse the same artwork everywhere. I don't blame them. I mean, the artwork is really, really good. Um, on the back, we've got a picture of the vehicle. And uh, I can see up at the top there, I can see Leoric, I can see Cryotech, and then down below I can see Feral driving the vehicle. Uh, the read-up says, It is a time when magic is more powerful than science, and evil Darkling Lords battle heroic Spectral Knights. Uh, for only those who control the magic control destiny. They are the visionaries. So this mystical motion holograms release a flaming shield of protection includes Feral, fully postable driver with three-dimensional holographic chest shield. Removable gunner pods act as hovercrafts for aerial reconnaissance missions. Battle puncher tosses enemy lords out of its way while smashing through fortress-like defenses. A positionable laser cannon disintegrates protective barriers. Free rolling uh, wheels increase the craft's battle speed. As for Feral's card down below, as mentioned with Mortred as well, for some reason they gave read-ups and summons for the vehicles, even though they didn't use them in the actual show. The Summon of Fire says, Draw upon the breath of stars and scorch the skies with fiery scars. Uh, as for the read-up on Feral, it says, Feral, a shifty knight with great battle experience and smooth tactical finesse. Only has the ability and the power to drive the awesome capture chariot into strategic assault missions. Hmm. Anyways, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a bit of a break. I'm going to get this all out, get this all set up, and we're going to get a better look at the Visionaries capture chariot. Stick around, guys. There's definitely more to come. And we have the very cool capture chariot out of box. Let's first have a look at the feral. Let's have a look at Feral that comes with the Capture Chariot. We'll zoom in. Now, unlike Mortred, I do have the hat or the helmet for Feral. As you can see, uh, somewhat of a generic head sculpt. It's very similar to G.I. Joe's. Like the eyes, the eyebrows, and the hair all kind of usually are one color. I would likely display Feral, though, with the helmet on. Um, I also have the weapon that came with Feral. Now in the show, it's some sort of tuning fork that could shock things. It, it was kind of like a like a cat, like I don't know, like a stun. <laughs> I don't even know how it would work. 
considering all power has ceased to exist, I guess being that he is, he can drive the vehicle, he has the energy and the magic to control the vehicle, maybe it's the same energy that could emit like an electrical uh, charge in, in, in the weapon. I don't know. Uh, does Farrell hold it? Yes, he does. You can see there. You can also see the totem down below. The totem of the fox. And uh, surprisingly, the totem actually has held up pretty good since 1987. That's a long time ago. <laughs> that is a really long time. That's what, 25 years ago? Still has held up. Um, in the way of Farrell's articulation, his head does rotate on a pin, or a ball joint, really. A ball joint is in his neck. He has a pin shoulder that will allow the arms to rotate. His arms rotate at the, el at the bicep. They bend at the elbow. He has the G.I. Joe style rubber band uh, inside his torso, which then allows his waist to move up and down, around, all the way around, every which way. Um, in his crotch, in his lower torso, he basically has something that looks like a coat hanger. Uh, there's a bar that goes across that has a kind of a ball joint on both ends. Those connect to the, the inner thighs, and then the, there's a little hook. And then that hook is what loops around the uh, the rubber band that sits inside the uh, the torso. That's basically how all GI Joes and figures such as this have worked. Uh, Cops figures, I believe, also had that that feature, um, but you get a lot of movement out of them too. There's a bend at the knee, and that's pretty much it. But uh, all things considered, still pretty good. Um, that then brings us to this. The wonder and the splendor of the capture chariot. Now, being that Farrell is the driver, it would make sense, of course, that he would sit in the front. That would allow him to charge and power the vehicle. Uh, the vehicle, if I turn it upside down, and hopefully Farrell doesn't fall out, there's a wheel on both sides. There's also two large wheels at the back. Um, so moving it is relatively easy. It squeaks a bit, but still, all things considered, it's pretty good. Um, on the front, there is actually hologram stickers placed all the way around the front. Now, uh, Spot has a bit of a confession. This isn't the first capture chariot I bought. I bought actually two capture chariots, and I actually Frankensteined what I think is a, is a more complete piece. The initial capture chariot I bought loose, um, which actually had better front bumpers. Uh, the stickers were all intact, and the bumpers worked a lot better. Uh, the one I bought in this box... Uh, the stickers on here were were put on, I don't know, by apparently some child was with either no vision or he had his eyes closed because the stickers were all over the place and a lot of them were really badly damaged. So I ended up taking uh, the, these front bumpers off of the one capture chariot and I put them back on this uh, this piece. The one that came in the box had a better base, like this red uh, main piece to the, the vehicle. And I think the only other thing I took from the other capture chariot was it had better pods. Um, so probably many collectors have done the exact same thing with their vehicles or you know whatever they're collecting. They might end up having to pick up several figures or several vehicles to get a complete and perfect vehicle or whatever toy they're collecting. Um, now these these uh, these front bumpers basically you can just press down on the back area here and that raises these up. The idea is that if some poor dark, you know, darkling lord happens to stumble out eating his lunch, you can hit it and totally knock him flying. Some other features, we've got a, a rotating gun turret on the middle area here. It doesn't rotate too much, only left and right, uh, but this, this also raises and lowers. And all things considered, uh, the white plastic has held up pretty good in the in the turret. I'm sure if I left out the toy for a long period of time on display, which I don't really want to do, uh, this probably might t start turning yellow. Um, also on the sides, we've got the, the, the bases that hold the turrets, and you can also rotate those out, like so. Um, in the cartoon, I think they were kind of they were kind of more out like that, or maybe a little further in. They were about like that uh, than actually further in. They stuck out just a little bit. 
Um, you can also see the same Merklin holograms are actually on both sides of the vehicle. And then that pretty much brings us, if I put the vehicle down, that pretty much brings us then to the, the, uh, the pods here. Uh, the pods are exactly the same, you get two of them. Now the pods have yellowed a bit unfortunately in time. Um, I don't think they were a solid white to start off with, um, but they look like they have, they have gone a little, uh, little yellowed in, in time. Um, it is a cockpit, so it holds a, you would hope, it holds a, holds a spectral knight. You could pretend also that the Darkling Lords have taken some of the pods. Now in this case, I'm just taking Leoric here. If I can get his legs to move. There we go. And uh, put his hand, uh, there we go. That's good enough. Uh, we've got Leoric, leader of the Spectral Knights, in one of the can in one of the pods. One thing that always interested me was the fact that there was only two pilots per per team. You know, Darkling Lords had uh, Recon. That was the guy's name, Recon, and uh, Mortrid piloted, of course, the Dagger Assault and the Sky Claw, and then you had Feral, and then you also had. Uh, I'm trying to remember his name. I, it's going to come to me later. I know uh, they were the only ones that could pilot the the uh, dag uh, the um, uh, the capture chariot. And what is the other name of the <laughs> the other name of the vehicle? Uh, it's going to totally come to me. Don't worry. It's totally going to come to me. I'll probably just put it, a note in here. Uh, but what was interesting to me about not only the Dagger Assault, or not only the, the Spectral Knights, but also the, the Darkling Lords, was the fact that there were standalone vehicles that could deploy from the Dagger Assault, as well as the Capture Chariot, but any one of the team members could use them. I couldn't figure out why, nonetheless the, the pilot charges the entire vehicle, and even when these pods escape, or leave the vehicle, there's still energy that's left in them that any one of these you know, in this case, the uh, Spectral Knights, any one of them could still pilot the, you know, pilot the pods. It's possible. The hologram on this one is a little, you can kind of see the hand. Maybe this one's a little bit better. We'll try this one here. Yeah, see this in time, some of these holograms, especially the vehicle holograms, after a while start losing the detail. You can kind of see the hand somewhat it's there and it's not there, but I'll also bring in another Spectral Knight. I'll bring in Wither Quick. Wither Quick will sit in the front. Here we go. And uh, we can have them pilot the vehicles. Now the pods themselves can rotate to the front, rotate to the back because they're just independent. And then you'd have cans in the front of these as well. Um, but used a lot in the show was these these hand holograms basically at any one given point the the hand holograms would come out and shoot the fireball at whatever was approaching the uh, the capture chariot um, I don't know why they would really call it a capture chariot not there's not really a lot of aspects to it that are capturing it's basically just launching any poor sucker that's gonna walk in front of the vehicle uh, but still this is a, just a great great vehicle to have um, I, if I could give a rating to the vehicle, did I actually give a rating to Feral? I'm trying to remember. The problem with getting old, of course you, you remember stuff and then you forget things. Uh, but the Capture Chariot though, I'm going to definitely give an 8.52. It's much larger than the Sky Claw. It's a lot smaller than the Dagger Assault. I want to review the Dagger Assault, but I don't know if, how I'm going to do it yet because it's so large. Um, but the Visionaries by far are some of my favorite toys from the 80s. Um, I hope you guys have enjoyed watching this review. I have lo I've loved every minute of reviewing this for you guys. Although granted, my, my memory isn't what it used to be. Um, but uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Let me know down below what you guys think of this particular toy. Maybe you had it when you were younger. If you are, maybe my age. Um, if you are probably around 10, 11, you probably have no idea what this entire video has been about. But uh, hopefully I have enlightened you guys with some cool toys that this guy, uh, maybe not necessarily owned, but toys that I had at my local toy stores when I was younger. Today's Retro Spot, we were having a look at the Visionaries, Knights of the Magical Light, Spectral Knights Capture Chariot in all its splendor. 
Thanks for watching as always, you guys. I'll see you guys next time. And in the hopes just to redeem myself a bit in this video, I just remembered the other vehicle name for the Spectral Knights. It was the Lancer Cycle. The Lancer Cycle. I also still I also still have the driver from the Lancer Cycle, which was Ektar. Ektar. Ektar, Lancer Cycle. Spot redeemed himself, yes. Alright, I just figured I'd tack this video on, guys. I don't know why. But I hope you guys have enjoyed it. I'll see you guys next time. Bye now.